Hey guys, welcome back to the MiniJet YouTube channel. Today's episode six of our Cub build series, and in this video, we're getting to one of the main milestones of the build, and that's installing the engine. Now, once the engine is in, we can install the IBR motor that controls the trim in reverse. We can also start on the engine cover frame uh, and a bunch of accessories that'll be mounting to that. But before we get to all that, there's a few parts that we've got to put in before the engine is in. That's the bilge pump, the bilge blower, and the steering cable, which we'll jump into right now. All right, so it's time to install the bilge pump into the cub. Um, so Ben's got everything laid out here that you get in one of our mini jet bilge pump kits. I guess we'll just start by going over everything that's included and then uh, how to set it up. Yeah, so the, the foundation of everything is this bracket that uh, is prefabbed and uh, fits perfectly inside of our stringers. There's a, a larger pocket that this just drops right into. All you need to do is drill these four holes into the stringer underneath and then uh, install these rivets. That'll attach that to the stringer. And then this is the uh, basket strainer that uh, clips into the bilge pump here. And that's got some slots in the bottom. And those mount to this uh, pre-laser cut uh, bolt pattern there. Um, and then you can pick your, your clocking, whichever direction you want the, the exit of the bilge pump to, uh, to point towards. Included in the kit is six feet of hose. This is actually already cut down to fit this boat perfectly, but six feet will fit any of our different models. You can cut it at every foot. And then in the, in the kit as well as included is this mini jet fitting. So it's for an inch and an eighth hose straight through, um, no restrictions. So you have maximum bilge performance out of that guy. And then this is the bilge pump that we like to use. Uh, it's a rule brand, 1100 gallon per hour is our preferred size. And this model here um, uses uh, not a float switch, but an inductive type sensor that just detects when water is present in front of this, this face. So yeah, no moving parts to fail or foul up. And there's a test option here. So you can make sure that your bilge pump's running. And I guess the way that mounts to the uh, basket makes it super easy that if you do experience some sort of clogging or failure, it's just as simple as pinching the two tabs on the side there. And pulling it out to inspect or service or whatever. Yeah, if you get debris in here, you can rinse that out easily. And then uh, I guess I can see through the end there, there's a, a one-way valve integrated into it as well, so you won't get any backflow yeah. um, with water that uh, comes in from rain or whatever. And yeah, so like I said, there's a float switch on it. Um, and then you can see here there's three wires. So there's a ground wire, which obviously goes to your main ground system. And then the brown and white wire is for a manual switch, uh, which we always install on the dash. And then this other solid brown wire is for automatic mode. So that's where the, the float switch is what's gonna turn on and off the pump. Um, and so we'll run both those to the same fuse. Uh, and then this manual line is just run through the switch. So you can override and, and manually turn the pump on if you need to. That all makes sense. Uh, bilge pump's obviously a pretty critical part of your boat. Um, yeah. I think generally we'll, we'll always put one in a boat required by law. The second bilge pump, I guess sometimes we'll um, leave that as a Venturi or there's an optional uh, second bilge pump that you can install just like this one, either at the same capacity or slightly reduced at 500 gallons per hour. I guess when it comes to installing this in the boat, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of riveting this all together, installing it into the stringer, running your hose um, mm -hmm. to your outlet fitting location. Just like all of our other outlet fittings, we like to put them somewhere where they're easily visible while driving, yeah. just so that you can check and make sure that your bilge pump is working if you're expecting it. Yeah, anything else uh, to look out for when uh, putting this guy in? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, just make sure you got this clocked right and you're happy with that before you rivet the basket down. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. In the bilge here, we've got uh, our bilge pump mounted. So as we described before, there's a pre-bent bracket that you just have to drill four holes and, uh, and rivet that on. And then you rivet the basket, uh, the strainer, uh, you rivet that to the bracket as well. And that holds the pump solidly in place in a nice low spot. I guess next up is kind of finishing out that uh, blower vent installation. So in a mini jet cub, there's already a nice hole there with all the, the mounting holes pre-drilled. So it's just a simple bolt-on operation there. So we're gonna mount, have a little bracket that gets welded up onto the deck there. So it's gonna mount there. And then we will run uh, the uh, included blower vent line from, from the vent to the motor. And then another piece of the pickup will run from the motor down uh, into this area so that it sucks any fuel fumes 
um, from the bottom, which is where they will be originating from. So we like to do all the, everything that's gonna be behind the motor, if we can get ahead and do that now, it's just easier to access that than before the engine's in. So we're gonna do the steering cable as well, which goes in this hole. So uh, this cable is 12 feet long. This is an 11 foot boat. We just go a foot oversized. That's the typical, typical installation length. So the cable runs under, beside the engine, however you prefer, and then it comes up, does kind of a high loop past the floorboard and past the kick plate area, and then into the into the steering helm up there. So yeah, a foot over the boat works for that layout. You know, if you had a really big boat with a, maybe more corners in your run, you might need a longer one. So there's a starter hole in the adapter plate that is slightly undersized. Whenever you drill it, it will also align the hole in the transom perfectly. Uh, that's why it's undersized. So we're gonna go in there with a 23, 30 seconds drill bit. And then as far as installing it, it comes with a nut, two washers, and then another nut. So remove one nut and one washer. And then we're gonna apply our sealant. You could apply it there, but it tends to make a mess on the cable when you push it through. So I apply it to this washer here. And so uh, both sides of the cable kind of look the same on first glance because they're both bulkhead style with a thread. There's, there's no clamp on this guy, but you can tell that the outside side is the one that we're looking for because of the rubber seals there on it. If you compare them, it actually has a longer threaded portion. Okay. And it's a larger diameter thread. Okay. We're going to insert the steering cable. It's gonna give us a nice pre-squish there. There we go. And the cable is set up so it's sticking out as much as possible from the transom. So this nut's bottomed out. Yeah, for whatever reason you were using a a different different strange nozzle um, maybe you'd want to use that adjustment we, we just uh, bottom it out and stick as much of the sheath out the back as possible so that's the steering cable uh, installed for now we'll rig up the helm a little bit later when we get to the dash portion yeah um, but at least the transom side is all all situated so yeah all right so more progress on the cub the engine is now in the boat. Yep. So um, we have a video on how to tear down a donor if that's what you're doing. So if you've got a Sea-Doo Spark and you want to tear it down and put it in a boat, we got a video on that. So just click up in the uh, top right hand corner of the video. Otherwise, the engine is in. It looks like you've got the mounts all welded in too. Um, yep. But from what I gather, there's still quite a bit more fine finessing work to be done. The way that I did it this time um, was to have the, the jet pump bolted onto the back and then the drive shaft inserted into the pump all the way. And then the engine slid onto this end of the drive shaft. So you can remove all the slack in the drive line. So I, I measured that and then I removed the engine and, uh, and the drive shaft and then tacked the motor mount uh, plates on the, the measurement that I'd taken and then welded them solid. And then from there, basically the, the motor is now sitting on the mounts and the bolts are the bolts are in with the nylock started on the bottom, but just loose. Uh, so it's kind of in its home, but not quite. Um, and there's slack under here where we can place these different size shims. So the alignment of the jet pump and the engine has to be um, all in line. So to do that, we have this tool um, that you can get from either a Sea-Doo dealer or. Um, there's a couple aftermarket suppliers that make these. So what this does is uh, it mimics the bolt pattern for the jet pump. Those three bolts there, which are the three that are on the pump. And what we're gonna do is bolt this on here and it has a precision machined tube here that we're gonna slide a, a long shaft through. And so it's gonna locate these three bolt holes, like the, the pump mounting surface. We're gonna be able to transfer that location inside the boat and uh, basically line up the, the drive shaft interface on the engine to the jet pump perfectly. So you'll see that. A little interesting tidbit, I guess. Uh, the reason that we put shims uh, always, if we were to just install the engine directly onto these uh, engine mounts with no shims underneath and you took an impact, you'd basically be SOL. There's no way that you can drop your engine down lower without cutting your engine mounts out and welding them back in slightly shorter. So just one of the kind of things that we think about before we put everything together, finish weld it, is all these little details to make sure that we have the, the freedom to adjust in the future. Okay, so Ben's just removed this little seal on the back of the engine, and that's gonna allow him to insert this drive shaft alignment tool from the back all the way through and in so we can check how uh, aligned we are. So he's just inserting it through that bracket that he bolted on. 
there it is coming out of the intake. Yeah. So now we have a, a visual and a physical reference as to how kind of off we are there. CD Spark requires this extra adapter. The engine is sitting slightly low, which is exactly what we kind of expect and want. So we have that ability to add or remove shims underneath uh, in case we get an impact later in the future. So mm -hmm. To line it up um, left and right, you can kind of start just visually, slide the engine over. So then it's you know, in, in line, more or less, uh, enough to get started. So we can see it's low, so we'll start adding some larger shims under all four corners. Um, until we're, we're close to that height and then to set the the level of the engine this way it requires getting this whole cylindrical piece in the engine without any binding and that will that's yeah if there's no binding that means that you're you're in line this way i guess it, it really is just a matter of guess and check uh you know in an ideal world everything lines up perfectly but little stack ups of stringer welding bottom welding uh, intake welding they all kind of make for slight tweaks here and there so yeah yeah, I guess Ben will uh, throw some shims in there, start moving the engine around, and then uh, we'll take a look once uh, everything's more, more or less bolted down. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so the engine is all bolted in now and hard mounted. So mm -hmm. looks like, Ben, you managed to get away with just one quarter inch shim under each corner. Yep, yep. The uh, engineering of these motor mounts is, is near perfect. So uh, one shim each, that's our, our minimum is a quarter inch everywhere. So that worked out perfect. And it looks great. So you said you got these torqued down and then we also do a, a line of paint mark across each one uh, just to validate that uh, they don't come loose during operation as well. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So now that the engine is all bolted in, of course, we have our alignment tool going in absolutely perfectly. So we have a really stellar fit there. Now the next step is going to be inserting the pump and the drive shaft and putting the carbon seal together. Yeah. So our procedure next will be, um, this is the carbon seal. So it's a rubber compressible bellows uh, with a carbon ring sitting there. And the way that this works is this will hose clamp onto the snout of the uh, the intake there. So it's that, that part right there. So the carbon seal goes over that. Yeah. And then this is called the top hat. And this is the, so the inner moving part of the seal. So it has a precision ground surface there that runs on the carbon that creates your seal. Uh, this is held in place with this hog ring that will get put on last. So you have to uh, install this onto the, the snout and then compress it uh, and slide this tool back enough that you can expose this ring where this is uh, the hog ring will be installed. And then when you release the compression, the top hat will push against the hog ring and lock. And so then there'll be compression stored here in, uh, in the bellows, which is gonna always apply pressure to this seal and uh, keep the water out of your boat. Cool, makes sense. So this end is gonna go into the back of the engine there. Yep. You got this thing that's gonna clamp onto the snout of the intake. And then this end is going through the actual intake itself and into the front. Uh, of the jet pump over yes. there. Perfect, so a bit tricky to install, just I guess because you're in such a confined space there and you've got to slide all these pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. But yeah, I guess it's, uh, is it bolting the pump on the back or do you slide the drive shaft through the intake first? Yeah, so it'll be slide the drive shaft um, in first and then bolt the jet pump on. And once the pump's bolted on, that will hold, hold the back end solid because we have to compress this seal. Um, so yeah, it needs to be bolted there so this, the shaft doesn't just slide out the back. Okay, makes sense. And I mean, after that's done, I think the pump stays on, eh? Yeah, it stays on. So another thing to note with a spark is we got to make sure we put this back on. I'm just going to put the, the, these clamps loose for now, but at least they're installed and then we'll, we'll crimp them down once this part is all complete. Okay. This is really the, uh, one of the other big moments besides putting the engine in is, is putting the pump on uh, for final assembly. So yeah, yeah. At that point, all the holes in the boat will be plugged and it should technically float. Yeah, besides all the accessories for the engine, it's, uh, it'll be ready to ready to run, all aligned. Yeah. So yeah, after that, I guess we're, we're really just looking at rigging out the peripherals. So we've got Zach here. He's got the IBR module out of the SeaDoo. The IBR motor is what controls both your trim and your reverse. Uh, and we're just gonna explain how to take it out of the ski and then what the process is for reinstalling it in the boat. So my process of removing it from the ski is I remove this autocur clamp. I pull this boot back. Inside you have this Torx. After that, you got the boot and the shaft out. You can just spin this nut out of the, off the hull. And then there you go. You got your IBR disassembled, ready for install. So ideally this shaft uh, doesn't move. We're gonna use the same orientation, but if you do happen to unscrew that by accident, it's all good. All you're gonna do is twist it until it's bottomed out. 
um, and then you're gonna back it off however much you need to to just get the uh, arm and everything realigned when it's time to put it back in. So there's the inner workings of the IBR. This is basically how we're gonna install it into the boat. Now there's a few modifications that we'll have to do just because the hull thickness on the ski is not the same as the hull thickness on the boat. And to avoid the IBR system having to relearn, we're gonna add a, a little spacer there. So obviously you're gonna cut a hole in your transom first. We're gonna use a one and a quarter inch hole saw uh, in the template location. Um, and then Zach's got this ring here. So basically, we're gonna install this ring on the inside of the hull. We'll put some Sika Flex here and here just to make sure it's all nice and sealed. And then on the outside of the boat, on the other side of the transom, apply some more Sika Flex on there. And then we're going to thread it all back together and just do the same process in reverse. Obviously, once this is all together, we'll put the Autiker clamp back on. Uh, make sure the orientation of everything's correct for the bucket. If you need to do any minor tweaks, you can adjust this by twisting it and uh, rotating that inner rod. Um, but if you do that, you might have to uh, relearn the IBR system. So ideally you keep everything in the stock configuration. But yeah, the next step is gonna be taking that motor back down to the basics and we're gonna throw it in the cup. So to locate the IBR motor, we wanna match its factory position in the ski. Um, and to do that, we're gonna use this um, nice little adapter jig that we have. If you guys want one of these, uh, let us know, but you should be able to just measure it off your stock hull otherwise. So Zach, do you wanna just show them how it fits up? So pretty straightforward there. Um, we've just got it set up so you can just kind of align it right to the side of the adapter plate. And then that little hole right there, you can throw a center punch in and mark your hole location. All right, so we've got the IBR motor all ready to go. So there's a nice amount of Sika Flex on the inside with that ring and on the outside portion too. So Ben's just gonna jump in the boat, put the motor on, and then Zach is gonna throw the, bo the boot on from the outside here. And so as you can see, Ben is just lining that up so that the uh, module is on the outside there. And Zach's just tightening that from the outside. So pretty self-explanatory there. Just wanna make sure that it's all nice and level. Uh, we wanna make sure that this is horizontal and this side is facing up. So perfect, and then uh, we just gotta reinstall that arm and we just gotta make sure that is straight vertical as well, up and down. So once again, bottom it out and then uh, twist it back to the uh, orientation that's correct. A little sneak peek, I see you've got this crossbar here. So that'll probably be coming up soon as long as, as well as the uh, engine cover. Yeah, so some of the accessories get mounted to this. I'm gonna get some of this done, there'll just be one one main cross member that runs across the top that I'm gonna to leave out for now just to have more access. This ends up basically being a, a ring frame around the edge to support the, the engine cover. It's gonna come up across. This piece will go here. And uh, like I said, there's mounts on the back for the, the sand trap and uh, our integrated, the stock coolant bottle gets relocated to a bracket up here. And then uh, there's also a hanger for the air filter to support that. And we got a couple more tricks. There's uh, an engine electronics bracket thing that's gonna sit on top as well. So yeah. this all get cleaned up pretty quickly. And then uh, really that's the kind of the heart and soul of the boat done, except for the dash, which is gonna come really soon. So yeah, I think very, very quick and momentous progress from this point on. Yeah, lots of engineering done on the front end makes it easier to install now. Okay, so now that the engine is in and we've got some of the other engine bay ancillaries in there too, we're gonna leave it there for today. Now looking ahead, we've still got the plumbing, electrical, and some other rigging fun stuff to sort out. So be sure to subscribe to the MiniJet YouTube channel so you don't miss the next episodes in the series when we get to all that fun stuff. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below and make sure you also drop a comment letting us know what your favorite part of the video was and what you're looking forward to most in the next videos. With that, we'll catch you in the next one.